me, Chris, or Bananas, and welcome to another Critters.tf weapon review. Today, we're going to be talking about the Bolshevik bomber. Before I start, let me clarify that this is not an official weapon. If you don't know what Critters.tf is, there's a video I made in the project and the card on the video right now, top right. Check that out and it should clear up any confusion about the topic. If you do understand what I'm talking about, let me also clarify that this was not the video I was actually going to make. It was going to actually be on the injector again because they decided to rework it one more time because they specifically hate me and everything I exist for, clearly. But I got bored while trading and decided to open up some new crates because gambling is cool and all. Warning, I do not promote gambling. Please spend your money responsibly. And ended up pulling this thing. This is actually the first unusual I've ever unboxed. After six long years, I have finally become an official TF2 player, because clearly that's one of the requirements, duh. But yeah, I ended up playing a bit of heavy, using the hat, fell in love with this dumb weapon again, and well, here we are. I will make a video on the injector in the future though, because boy, do I have some thoughts on that thing. But enough chit chat, let's actually get into this review. The Bolshevik Bomber is a secondary shotgun for heavy. I know a bunch of you heard that and are immediately turned off, but I want you to hear me out here, because I had the exact same reaction as you. But after using it for a while, this thing and other shotguns are actually really fun to use. I'll talk about that later though. Like most Creators.tf weapons, this weapon is fairly simple stat-wise, with the weapon only having one real upside, which is a flat 30% damage increase which, for a shotgun, is pretty damn huge, bringing each individual pellet up to 8 damage, meaning that if every pellet hits at point-blank range, which also gives the weapon damage ramp up, you can do 120 damage meat shots, just shy of one-shotting light classes, which is pretty damn insane. However, this, of course, comes at a couple of downsides. Nothing too major, though. You're facing a 20% slower deploy speed, 20% slower firing speed, and a minus 25% clip size, bringing your clip down to just 4 shots. I know this thing doesn't have a clip, it-, it shut up, it- who cares? I'd say the deploy speed is probably the smallest thing about this weapon, it just makes it so you can't switch to your shotgun as fast to finish off a target, something heavy rarely ever does. Most of the time, if you got your minigun out and firing, you really won't need to switch to a shotgun unless you're out of ammo. If you're using the Fist of Steel, however, this thing has a hilariously slow pullout time when switching from them. I mean, just look at the speed of this thing. Oh my god, it's so slow. Other than that, a slower firing speed just means you have a slightly slower time to kill on classes that are gonna take multiple shots. However, if you're fighting a soldier or heavy, this weapon actually has an advantage over the stock shotgun, as it will take one shot less to kill him, assuming you're hitting all meat shots. And finally, the smaller clip is probably the most noticeable. If you're like me and fucking suck at hitscan, you're gonna find yourself out of ammo much more often. Looking at the glass half full though, this does mean that the weapon rewards you for hitting your shot. That damage bonus is to be feared. This thing melts smaller classes at close ranges, and can do some real damage against larger targets. It's actually kind of scary. Oh, I should also mention that this thing makes enemies gib on kill. I had this off for most of the video because that's just kind of how my config worked before, but yeah, I mean, just look at the beauty of this fucking thing. Oh my god, I love when they go splat. Now that we've gotten the stats out of the way, let's talk about how to actually use this thing. Which I mean is pretty damn simple. It's a shotgun. You aim for center mass and pull the trigger. The closer you are, the more damage you do. I should also mention that this thing still does pretty good damage at range, and you can pick off weak enemies with this far more often than you can with stock. Like seriously, I got way too many clips of this where I just poke at an enemy and they just fall over and die, like why? Uh, but other than that, you should run this thing like a normal heavy shotgun. 
What's that? You have no idea how to run heavy shotgun? Because for most of the game's life, the lunchbox items have been considered far superior to them, and most players, once getting a lunchbox item, never switch back to stocks unless they're memeing with Fat Scout? Well, I can't really blame you there. The lunchbox items are really good for defense, but I don't think the shotguns are actually useless once you actually play with them. There are countless scenarios where I would be rotating to an area or pushing an objective and happen to run into an enemy when my gun is either not revved up or not even pulled out. This is where the shotguns are really useful as they can kill enemies far quicker than the time it'll take you to rev up your gun. Plus, you can move at full speed with the shotguns and while heavy is still the slowest class in the game, you can at least attempt to dodge some shots, unlike a revved up heavy who is essentially a giant standstill target. Sure, jump revving helps, but the shotguns just provide more reliable movement overall. Shotguns can also be used to finish off weak targets as mentioned before, poke at enemies to prevent crit heals from happening, push an enemy that's retreating out of your minigun's line of sight, and many other things. Ah. That just ain't right! Ah, oh, good night, Irene! Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it! They really aren't as useless as some people may make them out to. And while I'm not the ambassador, ambassador of, of all heavy mains, I, I do play this game a little bit every now and then, so you might be able to trust me here. One last thing I wanted to talk about here, something I briefly touch on in my other videos, is this weapon's synergy with other weapons. For primaries, stock is always good and the Tommy Slab is kinda dumb in my opinion, but if you're able to get in a heavily fortified position, this weapon can actually suit the Brass Beast quite nicely, as instead of being completely defenseless if someone, you know, tries to push you when your gun's not spun up, you actually have a shotgun to just, you know, shoot them. The Hue Long Heater is also a pretty damn good sleeper pick, as you can make up for the lost damage on non-burning players with the shotgun. You can switch the heater to destroy burning foes. It's not incredibly common, but it's still a pretty damn good option. For melees, the Gru and the Fist of Steel are always solid choices, but if you're looking for an option in the field of the macabre, try the Killing Gloves of Boxing. With a quick melee kill, you turn a meat shot with this thing from 120 damage to 360, one-shotting nearly everyone except a fully overhealed heavy and turning them into a nice, pasty mist. Overall, what do I think of this weapon? It's pretty great and is in a really good spot balance-wise. I should talk about one more thing with this weapon though, which is something I feared when I started using this thing, and is something I always look for when I look at balance in weapons. Is it just better than stock? And I'm pretty proud to say, no I really don't think so. Sure, more damage is always nice, but the slower firing speed and less bullets make this weapon more punishing when you miss, and really doesn't help when killing light to medium health classes since the damage really doesn't change the two-shot threshold for them. Sure, it's end up more reliable if you're missing your meat shots, but I do think it's a solid option for those who can aim, which most definitely isn't me. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like, and subscribe if you wish to be notified on my future uploads and live streams. Comment below what you think, either of the weapon itself or the video, and if there's nothing else, I want to wish you a fantastic day. And I'll see you in the next video.